Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever it is, wherever you're from, and welcome to the monthly Power Platform Community Call. My name is Shane Young, and I will be your host this week, or month, whatever this is. Uh, but my dear friend David is out currently on medical leave, and so I kind of filled in for him to try and help out here. So when I screw up everything, I don't want to hear any judgment. Don't hold it against David. He should get better friends so he could ask somebody better than me to do it. But as of now, you are stuck with me hosting this thing. So what exactly is this thing? So our agenda for today, we're going to talk about some different community resources, some community samples. Uh, we're going to do a group picture, right? Who doesn't want to do that? And we brought VESA in to make sure that I don't screw that up. And then we're going to get into demos. Now, before I talk about the demos, I want to put a standard disclaimer on this. I am terrible at names. I'm going to mispronounce everyone's name. I, I apologize now. I'll apologize again. I just names are not a thing that I'm very talented at. So. With that said, we're going to first start off with tips and tricks using Dataverse Connector and Power Automate. So Chris is going to walk us through some fun little things there, kind of get us going on just things he's picked up along the way, because we know that Dataverse becomes more and more popular all the time, and we all need to be learning it, right? I know a lot of us started with SharePoint. We want to stay there, but man, we got to continue to stretch into Dataverse if you haven't already, because that is the best data source for Power Platform. Then Avengers Assemble, woohoo! A simpler checklist with Power Automate and Dynamics 365. Very cool. This is from Angeliki. I hope I said that at least close to right. Like I practiced, I tried. Um, but so very good, right? You know, we know that the whole Power Platform, we evolved out of uh, Dynamics 365, and there's a lot of stuff there, a lot of interest there. And Dynamics 365 is just a great platform as whole. So maybe you started with Power Apps, but you know, seeing yourself growing into dynamics is also a thing. So can't wait for that session. And then finally, Abdulai, Abdulai I said that wrong, I'm positive, uh, is going to give us inspiration for building solutions from everyday life, right? Because sometimes you're like, all right, I want to get into this thing, but I don't have any work projects. So let's talk about how some of the things you can do to make your everyday life goes better, right? I, I love that as a way for people to get started because you're more invested in that. You're more willing to dig into it when it's something that personally benefits you. Right? And that's the same type of stuff that when I talk, talk to people about learning how to use generative AIs like Copilot more, right? that's the thing. Like Finding you know things that you connect with in your everyday life is a great way to learn no matter what you're trying to learn. So that's our agenda for today. But before we do any of that, let's go here and look at this lovely animated slide. You can tell I didn't make it because I can't make animated slides. But this is all of the different community resources, right? We've got community videos, we've got LinkedIn discussion groups, we've got all the open source stuff, we've got samples, all of these things. Now, if you're looking at this and going, wow, that's a lot of stuff to consume, I agree. First time I saw this slide, I was like, how in the world would I ever keep up with that is also. But if you go to the far right there, the aka ms.community uh, home, that one, that link has all of these links, some text, some different explanations. Basically, everything that you need to be more engaged in the Power Platform community is going to go from there. So I would check, and I would say the Power Platform and the uh, the larger Microsoft 365 SharePoint community, right? Like it's kind of all under one umbrella there. So aka ms slash community slash home, that's really the only URL you need. You start from there, you can find all this other stuff, all right? And then if you're on Twitter or X or whatever we call it this week, um, you know, look for updates there from at M365 PNP um, or in LinkedIn. So, you know, wherever you're engaging, that should work for you. All right. Next up. Boop. So speaking of this monthly call, right, it happens the third, whatever day of the week this is, Wednesday of every month, I do believe, if I screwed that up, well, I told you I'm going to make mistakes. But um, the request to present. So if you want to be one of the presenters, if you are jealous of the people that are presenting this week, right, like they get to hang out with me and present. Who doesn't want to do that, right? Then definitely go out there and, you know, fill out the AKA MS community request demo and tell us what you want to demo, right? These demos are all done by people from the community. Some of them present to the community all the time. Some of them is their literal first time ever doing something in public. We like it either way. Uh, you know, and we will help you. So if you want to be a first-time presenter and you need some help, you want to know what to talk about or not what to talk about, you should have your own topic. But if you need help, you're just a little nervous about it, you want some tips, like we will help you do this. All right? This is a great stepping stone if you've ever thought, I want to be one of those crazy people 
like uh, you know me jumping up and down on stage or Vesa jumping on top of the stage. Uh, if you've ever watched Vesa present live, you would know that he does some crazy stuff. But if you really want to get to that where you're doing it on large stages, sometimes things like this, a simple Teams call where you just share something for 15 minutes, is a great stepping stone to just getting out there in the community better. So please join us. We love to have your content across all those different tools. It's a good way to jump in. All right. Next up, we got sample and badges. So the samples, this is put together every month by Kate. Kate was out, uh, she's speaking, I think, on a stage this week. Um, so we miss you, Kate. I added that in there. Uh, I know, I'm very cute. But um, some of the sample apps we want to talk about this month, Power Apps Weekly Timesheet Template. So if you've ever wanted to build a timesheet app or see mechanically how they work, because there's a lot of moving parts to make a timesheet work. Um, my dear friend April Dunham has made one of these and made it available to download. So you can download that working app. Um, I have known April forever and she is one of my favorite people. So it's really cool to see that she was the first one here. Um, then we've got a Sudoku power app game by Arash. Um, very interesting as well, right? You know, building a Sudoku game. This is actually one that I've thought about building before uh, years ago and I never got to it. So I'm going to have to go download his and, just look through it and see what he did because you know, it's it's interesting. And I think a lot of times apps like that, there's a lot that you can learn. Even if you're like, well, I'm never going to build a Sudoku for work. Why would I do that? But there's a lot of mechanics that go into there to the randomized patterns, the logic, the checking, all of that. There's a lot that you can learn from something like that, even though you're like, oh, that's not really a, a thing I do for work. It's There's a lot of good mechanics in those type of apps. Uh, Kinga gave us a Power Apps license calculator. So I think you all know Power Apps has licensing. And so uh, his licensing uh, calculator is just to help you do the math about the number of users you have, how active they are, how many apps you have, and help you figure out how that goes. So it's just a fun little sliding kind of dynamic chart uh, for looking at that. Uh, Shahir made a responsive Canvas template. So we all know responsive is really hard. And we all know that we all seem to do responsive slightly differently. So I think that's a fun one there to, once again, go download and just poke the bear. See what Shahir did and see, like, can you pick up any tips or tricks? Maybe you like how he handled one thing versus something that you're doing. You know, it's a good way to learn. And then last but not least, uh, Bob there, he did a uh, Patch Tuesday. And so this one is a flow, right? If you've ever been in the... IT administration side of things. Right? That's where I started, right? I was a network systems admin guy like way back in 2000, a long time ago. Uh, you know, it's kind of what got me into SharePoint uh, before, after that. But one of the things that we had was this thing called Patch Tuesday. You know, the first Tuesday of the month, right? That's when the Microsoft rolls out patches. You may have never noticed, but it's a very real thing. So if you work in a corporate world where you've got to patch physical servers still, and you've got to kind of plan for that, you don't just let auto update run on your infrastructure. Anyway, Bob wrote a very cool flow that helps you look at dates and calculate when is the next Patch Tuesday. Once again, you're probably thinking, Shane, I don't need that. I know, but Bob's got a lot of just interesting Power Automate logic in there that can just make your brain go, oh, I like this. I, I learned a little something about how to deal with it, right? Because maybe you're not worried about Patch Tuesday, but maybe you're worried about the fourth Tuesday of the second quarter because that's when you get paid your bonus, right? And so you need to be able to programmatically calculate that. A lot of that type of logic you'd be able to take from looking at what Bob did there. So there you go. All right. Um, so also, you know, if we could AKA MS sharing is caring. So, um, you know, Vesa and David have been working really hard on coming up with a uh, set of tooling to help you get started as a community member better, right? So just different things that help you jump into being a first time contributor, whether you wanted to do that through uh, sample apps, code, speaking of the calls, just kind of all those ways that make it easier for people to get started. So that is still a work in progress, but I hear it is going to be coming very soon. So be on the lookout for AKA MS sharing is caring. Ah, and then we got this crazy little guy. This might, little badger dude here, like he just might be my favorite critter ever. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I really like my Chewy and my buddy uh, little images, but I really like this dude as well. Um, so anyway, the uh, community recognition program, um, you know, if you are contributing to the community, you can go there and sign up to the community slash recognition. 
and then they have badges that are done via Credly. And so when you do different types of contribu contributions, is that a word? I think contributions is a word. Then you're going to be able to um, get Credly badges for that. So you can then use in your social media, LinkedIn, that type of stuff to show people that, yeah, hey, I'm part of this community and you'll know, help to drive interest. Maybe that inspires them to get involved in the community. So it kind of helps things organically grow uh, quite a bit. So very cool little program there. And it's just a, such a fun little picture. So, all right, porcupine, I called it a badger, sorry. I think uh, someone, uh, Natalie, poisoned my mind with badgers. Um, and that's uh, what was in my mind as I was looking at the porcupine. So thank you for, see, I told you I'd screw up. All right. Oh, it spins. See, these animated slides, they get me. Okay, so uh, some of the different events that are coming up. Um, first off, we've got the uh, Canadian Power Platform Summit. Um, it is March 16th in Vancouver. Uh, this lovely picture talks about a, a discount code that's no longer valid, so don't try that. But I did. It was very helpful, right? I put the, uh, the date up there, March 16th. So if you're up there in um, Vancouver, then it would be worth checking out. Uh, next up, we, you know, in Orlando, April 30th to May uh, 3rd, there it looks like there is going to be the Microsoft 365 conference. Um, so it is in Orlando. Who doesn't like to go to Orlando in the spring? It is beautiful there. Uh, but it is all things, you know, Teams and SharePoint and Power Platform. I'm going to ponder a guess that there'll probably be a little bit co-pilot there as well. Uh, so very cool conference if you haven't checked that one out. We got TechCon 365, right? They've got a Seattle, DC, and Dallas. So all over uh, different events coming through, right? Same type of stuff, right? It's kind of that Microsoft 365 plus the Power Platform uh, content all rolled into one lovely bundle, but three different places, a little bit more regional, easier to get to if you're in different parts of the country or parts of the world, I should even say. Um, and then, of course, we've got Viva Las Vegas, um, you know, it was good enough to host the uh, Super Bowl, so it's probably good enough to host the Power Platform Conference. That is coming in September. I will be at that one, so if you needed any reason whatsoever to go to it, of course, it's because I will be there. Um, but so that is a great event. It was awesome last year. It was. It's just so powerful, right? It's all Power Platform stuff, and you can just, like the energy is just palatable, right? As you walk through the halls, you sit in the sessions, you talk to people, there's just so much love from everyone about the Power Platform. The community is really great and very friendly. I, I can't say enough nice things about this conference. I love this conference. I'm glad that they uh, chose to let me uh, come and speak again. They've already posted my workshop. I'm the only external speaker they've done. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, go check that one out if you haven't. All right, as enough commercials. Oh, so uh, all the upcoming events, you can find them at AKA MS Community Days. And so, you can uh, see all the events, or if you have a community event that you want to get posted and added out there, there's a way to add your own events so that you can make sure you're getting, you know, notoriety for the awesome events that you guys are running locally in your uh, regions as well. So, all right, lots of different things coming up there. Okay, now we are to the part where VESA is critical, right? And that is the optional picture time. So if you would like to come in, uh, turn on your camera, then you can join us for picture time. All right, Vesa will take a lovely little picture and post it on social media. Remember, if you enable your camera, you are consenting or giving permission for us to use this on social media. But like everyone see your pretty faces or look at my beautiful like teal shirt here. I brushed my hair, I brushed my teeth. Maybe these things don't happen every day, I don't know. Um, so I promise you look good enough to be joining the call. So Vesa, I'll stop talking. Anything else you wanna say before you take the picture? No, 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 Let's, we have 50 seats in a room. Uh, so for those who've been doing this in the past, they know 50 seats made in Microsoft Teams. Uh, so let's wait for a few more seconds until we get hit the limit again. And uh, Stephanie has a cat. Yes, there's a cat. Uh, I, I saw the cat, yeah, that, that, yeah, there we go. Cat is visible. Somebody's joining also virtually. That's really cool. A few more seats in the room. Let's wait a few more seconds before we start recording. And I will then capture the GIF animation out of here. Let's go. Let, I think it's time. So let's do the recording and let's do some hand waving. Everybody, thank you for joining once again on the community. And let's do some hand waving. Yay! We can see multiple cats on the on the screen. Awesome, awesome. Excellent. <laughs> this is really cool. 
Excellent, excellent. We'll grab a key animation out of that and share that in the social media. Thanks everybody for joining. And uh, and Shane, back to you. All right, thank you, Vesa. Vesa is on vacation, but he's so committed to the community, he joined just to make sure I didn't screw that up. Maybe he's just not committed to me not screwing up. I don't know, but anyway, thank you, Vesa, for joining us. All right, now I believe it is time for demos. Woo, I get to stop talking. Yay! Who wants to listen to me talk more? No one? I didn't think so. So first up, we have got Chris. Chris, would you like to share your screen and talk to these lovely people about your tips and tricks using the Dataverse connector and Power Automate? I would. Thank you very much, Shane. And I too did brush my hair this morning, as you can see. And Chris, I am very disappointed you're not wearing the bow tie. Like I, in my first version of the intro, I was going to talk about how you know you were wearing a very southern outfit there, and I, I like the bow tie. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's the most common complaint I get. People, you don't you know, they use the bow tie to recognize me, and it's my biggest regret. One that that photo was um, from my my wedding day, but um, I regret to, it not actually going and buying the tux. That one was a rental, so oh well, missed opportunity. Gotcha. <laughs> you want to right. say you gonna share your screen there? Why don't you take over? I absolutely will. All right, just give me a thumbs up or a yay if you're able to see it. I am mm -hmm. running it. PowerPoint in window mode just because I'm on a widescreen, so apologies if it looks uh, a little funky, but um, hopefully that's showing up okay. Looks great. Take it away. Excellent. So I'm going to be talking to you about or giving you guys some tips and tricks using the Dataverse connector in Power Automate. Yes, I realize that's a very uh, word-heavy title. Maybe I could have used Chat GPT to make it more concise, but oh well, here we are. Um, so for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Chris Piasecki. I'm a principal consultant and uh, recently founder. I, I started off my own sort of consulting um, firm. I used to work for um, a large uh, Microsoft partner for several years prior to that, um, but then decided to take the leap um, just fairly recently and I've been I'm loving that ever since. But um, I come from a developer pro dev background, as you could say, but um, more recently I'm working as sort of a solution architect and of course, um, you know, definitely consulting, working for clients um, in all sorts of different industries. But I've been, my background has been in Microsoft since, um, well, since I ever started my career, which has been almost 12 years as of today. But, um, yeah, what's hooked me in to low code was really the early roots of, which was dynamic CRM way back in the day, probably like eight or so years ago, and just being able to do the things that you can do um, without code and being able to really accelerate development was, you know, what hooked me and just seeing how it evolved today has just been quite amazing. And so, you know, I've, I've been ever so uh, deeply rooted in this community ever since. Um, I am a Microsoft Business Applications MVP. Um, I'm also a Power App Super user. Um, I also run the Edmonton Power Platform User Group. Um, more recently, speaking at a number of events. Um, I'm also on the Community Ambassadors Advisor Board, so kind of being a voice of the community and helping um, basically improve the Microsoft community and the community forums to help um, you know help improve the product, but also helping people to get you know, helpful information that they need to continue using and adopting the product. Um, and another thing, um, also Shane did show a little slide on, but I'm one of the um, co-organizers that's organizing the Canadian Power Platform Summit that is help, um, happening in Vancouver, British Columbia and next month in March. Um, and actually just a small update. I did actually have an update on that specifically. Um, the reception that we're seeing and interest in the event has just been quite amazing. And we are actually currently sold out um, as of right now. And so we, of course, are looking at ways to expand capacity for the event. No guarantees at this time, but it's something we're actively looking at. But I do highly encourage those to join the waitlist, as there are also people that may drop out for whatever reason they can't make the event. So getting on the waitlist will allow you to get first in line if if a seat becomes available. So um, for more information, you can go to CanadianPowerPlatformSummit.com. And with that, so I'll just kind of jump right into it. So I've got just kind of a few useful um, tips and tricks that'll kind of help you work with the Dataverse connector as it becomes more and more um, adopted throughout the platform, as, as Shane says, and throughout organizations getting access to Dataverse and seeing the value that it provides. And so though a, a lot of times people can get a bit intimidated by it, and sometimes there's some nuances about um, using the, the connector that is not always straightforward and 
requires you know a lot of banging your head against the wall to kind of figure things out. And so hopefully I can shed some light on a few uh, common things that I see to make things easier um, as you're kind of starting on your, your journey. Uh, so the first tip I have for you today is specifically around running flows as the triggering or modifying user. And so, you know, one of the reasons that, you know, this becomes important, and this will be particularly familiar to those that have um, a history working with Dynamics and using the classic workflow engine is that who the workflow runs as is very important for a lot of scenarios, especially when the workflow is maybe going and updating records inside of Dataverse. So by default, it's running as the, the owner of the workflow, and you know, hopefully, it, it, you are, your, your workflows are owned by either a service principal or service account, um, and rather an individual for continuity. However, um, the downside of that is that when you're going and updating any records or creating any records, it's going to show that service principal or service account in any of the audit data. So any of the record created on or updated on fields, it's going to be by that user and doesn't necessarily give a clear indication of who actually is the one that caused those records to be updated. So typically you want that to be who caused that workflow to trigger in the first place. And so the nice thing we can do is, is we can set the run as option to be the modifying user so that we can you know, address those problems that were previously stated. So when you go and select the run as modifying user, this will then give you the option in any downstream um, Dataverse um, flow actions to select what's called the use invokers connection, as you see on the right there under the three ellipses. So this will give you the flexibility to decide, okay, for these particular actions, I want to use the, um, the modifying user in order to update a particular row so that you know you you have traceability and audibility on who actually performed those actions and also from a security role perspective there's other implications as well but it still always gives you the flexibility and that maybe some actions you may still want it to run as the flow owner which will be what kind of runs by default if you're not using the use invokers connection so that's uh, tip number one uh, another tip that I don't see maybe used as frequently, but I, it is um, quite useful and has its very, uh, well, uh, very specific use cases is the delay until trigger. Now, I'm sure many of you are probably familiar with the delay until action that is not specific to Dataverse, but um, can be used to insert, you know, delays into your flow, whether, you know, the use cases, maybe you want to um, have some delay between sending an email notification, maybe you only want it to send during business hours and not you know, disturb people in the late hours of the night, or perhaps you're trying to orchestrate some type of batch operation in response to a key event, but don't want to impact the operational system during peak hours, whatever the reason may be, um, you may want to in introduce a delay. Now, the nice thing is by using the delay until in the Dataverse trigger, um, that's an advantage over the um, delay until action that's part of the, the Power Automate platform, is that you are not going to be constrained by the 30-day timeout that you see on flows, right? Because when you're running the delay until action or any sort of action, there's going to be a 30-day timeout just on the flow in general. Now, this delay until on the trigger is not subject to that because it technically hasn't triggered the flow and therefore won't be subject to that timeout. So if you need to wait some longer duration before triggering this, maybe say 30, 60 days or and it is however that may be, you can do that using this. Now, one limitation to be aware of is that you, as of right now, um, you can't use any expressions to make it um, fully dynamic in that, in that regard. So for example, if you want to use like an add days to say run it 30 days from now, uh, that won't work. However, you can in, uh, you specify a date field specifically. So perhaps you have a field inside of your Dataverse table that you want to track of one that maybe that notification needs to be sent on, you can enter that into the delay until to have it be at least dynamic in that sort of nature. Okay, third tip. And this isn't just one as I found that can get people into a lot of trouble and can result in a lot of frustration is relying on trigger data in downstream actions. Um, to be to be there when you need it. Um, this particularly becomes um, important part of your design, um, especially you know when you're working with Dataverse updates and, and, and modifications that you always want to generally trigger 
the uh, trigger these um, updates only when specific events happen or maybe when specific fields are updated. So you'll want to use you know, the select columns to only tr to, to specify which fields you want to um, trigger the, up, uh, the flow. And also in conjunction with filter rows can go into further detail to specify expressions on exactly um, what state of the data needs to be in on when it can trigger. Now, the problem can occur is that if you're referencing the triggered um, data in downstream actions, um, you can end up in a scenario where that data is empty uh, because especially when you're working with um, modified events, you're only going to see columns show up that actually changed or were included as part of the update requests that occur inside of Dataverse. So in this scenario above where you see we have first name, last name, and middle name, that's being um, going to trigger an update um, or this flow to, to, to trigger on an update, if I only updated the first name and you have an action that's maybe depending on or using the last name and middle name from the trigger and it's empty, well, you're going to result in an error. So in order to work around this and, and safeguard, um, you'll, you'll always want to use a follow-up get row by ID in order to get the full record or whatever the, the, the columns that you need, in this case, the same ones that are part of the trigger and maybe any additional ones that you want to include, and then reference that one downstream inside of your flow. That way you won't have to uh, worry about whether the data is going to actually you know, be there or not. Well, of course, that's not guaranteeing that necessarily the data is not null, but at least you'll know at that time um, you can uh, you can account for that um, specifically. But also another advantage is you'll have the most up to date state of that particular record because with flow being asynchronous in nature, there could be some delay between one that you know trigger um, occurs and or the execution of that flow occurs, and there may have been subsequent updates that have occurred since then. So by doing a get row, you'll want you'll actually ensure. That Hey, you're getting the most up-to-date state of that particular record. Um, tip number four, and this is probably one of my more favorite ones, is the use of fetch XML. And for those that are not um, familiar with fetch XML, it is a querying language that is native to and specific to Dataverse that is used to construct more complex querying um, and retrieving of data. Um, especially when it comes to joining data sets. Now, I'm sure many of you are aware if you're using the list rows um, with just a normal select columns and filter rows, it's going to be quite challenging and tedious if you need to work with related data um, across you know, parents or child records. You may have to construct multiple list rows and somehow manually join the data, which is not necessarily efficient from an APL, API calls perspective and from a performance perspective. And so what you can do is use fetch XML instead to uh, provide a more uh, uh, provide a more complex query uh, more efficiency allows you to do things like inner and outer joins so that you can kind of mash up data from say both um, a parent and child record so for in this example you have maybe um, a user's table and you have a team's table and you want to retrieve all um, users that are part of a particular team and so you can um, provide things like filtering and conditions as well for more advanced scenarios. And that allows you to, again, work with the data when all, in one call um, and make things a lot easier. And you know, to make it, of course, as, as Fetch XML, as you can see, it is XML based and it may look a bit intimidating. Um, the nice thing is there are many great community tools. Uh, one that I highly recommend is the Fetch XML Builder from the XRM toolbox that can be used to actually build and construct your fetch XML queries and test them before then bringing them inside to Power Automate and testing them inside of there and using them. And so that's a great tool to make it um, less uh, daunting to work with uh, that if you're not someone that's uh, um, you know, comfortable working directly with XML or not maybe a developer. Um, and just kind of a uh, uh, this, this last and final tip I have that's a little bit more narrow um, and specific, but one I've found that I've ran into frequently, especially if you're working with file or image columns inside of Dataverse and need to retrieve additional information about that file metadata, you'll find that if you're downloading a file or image, you're not going to get anything additional inside of that. So you'll get the actual binary content of the image, but if you need to get something like the file name, the file type, the file size, things like that, um, you're going to not you're going to be disappointed to see that that information is not going to be available in the output of that download a file or image um, action. Now, one way that we can get around this is basically 
we need to go into what's called the file attachments table. And this, so the file attachments table will, will actually store a reference to the files that are being uploaded inside of Dataverse. So as many of you may know, the file actual file content is now stored in blob storage, so outside of the transactional database, but a reference to the actual record, um, and including any of its metadata, such as the file name, file size, file, you know, MIME content type, are all stored inside of the file attachments. And so in order to get to that data, um, one, we would need, first of all, access to that particular um, file or image column that's inside of your table. So in this particular case, we have accounts and it has the entity image, which is the main image of the record. So if we go ahead and get that entity image, what it'll return is actually a GUID or the, the ID of the record that's going to be referenced inside of the file attachments table. And so once we retrieve that entity image, uh, the GUID to the basically the pointer to that attachment record in the file attachment table, we can do a, a list rows action, and we can basically specify the file attachment IDs equal to the basically the outputs, the ID that comes up from selecting this entity image um, column. And then we can go and get access to the additional metadata, whether that's the file name, the file size, and so on. And so that's a nice little, um, again, more narrow and more specific um, tip, but something that I found to be very useful when having to frequently uh, work with files after we brought them in and move them around and things like that. Um, so again, those are just some nice, easy um, guidance on in terms of how to use flow with Dataverse. Of course, there's a lot more that we can do, and this is probably a topic all on its own. I could probably spend an hour talking about it, but unfortunately, I only had about 10 minutes or so to go into that. So just a few examples of how you can get started. But um, there's some great documentation on Microsoft Learn on how to use the different types of actions and triggers inside of flow. So I highly recommend checking that out. Um, if you're not already familiar, it's a good starting point. And of course, there's always lots of great community blogs and stuff out there that goes into more um, advanced scenarios, kind of like the file specific one I talked about at the end there. Uh, so with that, um, yeah, thanks for for having me. It's actually great to be uh, presenting on this on this again. Actually, the last time I think I was on was I think when we did this live at the Orlando MP MPPC in 2022. So it's uh, great to be back and uh, great to see all of you folks um, again. Well, thank you, Chris, for joining us. That was pretty awesome. Lots of questions and comments went through the chat. Um, I guess I will just tell you to go check those out. But uh, overall, everyone, like there was some questions around licensing. Like we're not going to talk about the L word in great detail. We're not <laughs> going to put Chris on the spot. But if your Dataverse is involved, it is a premium data source. Licensing does become a thing. So I think we're just going to set it at that and say, Chris, that was very, very good stuff. So thank you. Yeah, no problem. I will note that I'm not sure if it's an issue on my side. I don't seem to have access to the chat, so maybe I'll try and rejoin and hopefully I can get access to that history. But um, I'll do my best to get to those answers. And if you do have follow-up questions, uh, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm always the most responsive there. So if I can't get to the chat, um, best to follow up with me there. Thanks. All right. Just to clarify, Next up, Chris and Shane, the problem with the chat is that we hit the max out 1,000 people in the chat. So we're trying to clean it up and definitely will be cleaned up for next month. Uh, but it, we, it might be that we cannot get people in the chat for this call, unfortunately, any more than there is, so, which is hundreds and hundreds of people. So, sorry. I know. Isn't it exciting? I knew all, lots of people showed up this week or month. So yay. All right. Next up, we've got uh, Angeliki. Uh, hopefully I said that at least close to right, and she's going to get her uh, Avengers to assemble. So, Angeliki, do you want to jump in there and A, tell us how terribly I pronounce your name, and then B, jump in and share your screen? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, first of all, no worries. Oh, good. Let me start sharing. And let me know when you can see it. Are you able mm -hmm. to see a PowerPoint? Because I've had a bit of a technical issues today. Yeah, so I see the PowerPoint view of like you editing a PowerPoint. I see that that Perfect. side. Is full screen now? Yes. Yep. Amazing. Amazing. So first of all, really, really excited to be here. Um, this is the first time I'm actually doing a community demo call. You usually see me in various conferences because I do love the energy and the passion of the community. However, um, I thought it's also really exciting to be part of the community calls as well. 
And today I wanted to use the Avengers theme to talk about how we can automate in a very simple and extendable way checklists within Dynamics 365 by using all the amazing features of Power Apps as well as Power Automate. So a little bit about me, I am that kind of Greek Italian person that you'll find with a bizarre accent. I've been living in the UK for the last decade. I am also a, a MVP in business applications in the UK and with a hybrid nature as well. So I'm a ProSci certified change manager as well as a CRM functional consultant with that hybrid of passion of I love CRM, I love business applications and how we can have that kind of human impact in oh, so, hey I think we're we do. sorry we're still seeing your PowerPoint edit screen so oh, like we still see the Avengers really? symbol. Yes. Oh dear. Okay. Let me share my screen because today is oh just wait, the day. wait oh you had it it, it was there then no? okay, right, try <laughs> okay let's try again that's fine just on the day that you shouldn't be having those issues, right? Ah, you know, it's if there's no bugs, then what uh, what would people remember? All right, so now we see the PowerPoint edit screen, but we see that you're on a bit about me. Right. Are you not able to see the full screen presentation then? Is that it? No. Yeah, we do not okay. see the full screen. But when you start, like, as you started to close it last time, I saw it for a second. That's very, that's very odd. All right, give me a moment. Let's try it again. Mm. Any better? Or no, still the edit screen? Still the edit screen. Do Yeah, no. And I don't. Oh, hang on. It's doing something. Okay. Nope. All right. So you stop sharing. Right. Let me try one more thing. And let's see if that's going to work. Yeah. Let's see. <sighs> Apologies for this. It's one of those days, right? No worries, right? This is the fun of the community calls. We all get to figure out little goofy things like this together. Exactly, exactly. Right, and are you right. sharing the full screen or are you trying to share an app? Uh, the app. So sharing the full screen would probably... Yeah, see, it's back to sharing the edit screen. Back to sharing. Okay, let's try the full screen since the demo gods are not kind to us today. It's because I said everyone's name wrong. It's my punishment. <laughs> Do you think so? That's fine. Let's try this again. Okay, how about now? Do we have full screen on? Dun, 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 dun. Yay! A bit about me and Perfect. your Funko doll Perfect. is there. Yay! All right, right. I will stop talking. <laughs> right. Good job. Let's let's wave through it. Okay, perfect. So as I was saying, I'm half Greek, half Italian. I've been living in the UK for the last decade. Um, really passionate about the community. I'm a BizOps MVP as well, and with a hybrid nature. So my background has always been in CRM operations, uh, whether it's been in marketing, change management, as well as functional consulting. And ultimately, I'm a human evangelist. So the reason I am so active in the community is because I believe in the human impact that we can have through everything that we build in our business solutions. And um, there's so many ways to interact as well. So recently, I've been doing some blogging as well through my blog, Empowered Humans, and the different ways we can and learn from each other. But we are here for checklists. And just like Simon Sinek says, um, it's good to start with why. Why are checklists even interesting? So sometimes we have to think about the industry needs and why there's so many different use cases where you need live checklists, where you can see all of your different data together rather than the traditional BPF style. So think, for example, when you're doing um, hygiene inspections in a restaurant or when you are doing uh, retail shop floor inspections, or maybe you're a doctor or a nurse and you're doing medical checks and you have your lovely uh, chart that you're going through. At the end of the day, we also, even though we love automation, it might not always be possible. So 
you know, thinking realistically, there might be cost limitation, resource limitations, and sometimes human judgment and interventions are needed. So automation is not friendly to that. Of course, the elephant in the room, why don't we do BPFs? I mean, we love them, right? So business process flow sometimes can be complicated if we're thinking of an inception scenario. So if we're doing those Nesso builds, sometimes it can be too complicated to build. And we know stakeholders do love going crazy with their requirements. And finally, the format might be a bit of a challenge as well. In the use cases that I mentioned, you have this very easily digestible um, chart-like format where you want every check to be visible and filled in parallel or in different manual dimensions. So all of these reasons um, are pointing to what can we do in a simpler way rather than just going um, too complicated with this. So here's the use case uh, we are going to delve into the world of the avengers and i'll show you how they've been using um full full-blown power platform solutions and particularly dynamics 365. um so here we have tony and we need to help him prep for battle with the avengers they have multiple programs that they are um, using in order to stop threats um, so they need us help to build a checklist so they can go through the different checks to prepare them across different dimensions so what are those dimensions? Uh, we have intelligence prep, planning for battle, making sure the systems are in order, that their equipment is ready, and of course, the security is there. Now, this is gonna be our process our, as part of a wider business process flow that they are using in their amazing solution called Aventry 65. It's a battle prep management solution where they are able to look at all sorts of cool things that I'll show you in a moment um, and managing anything from um, the Avengers profiles to the protected cities, to the villains, the different um, inhumans that they might be tracking or the monoliths or if you're an Avengers fan, you're gonna love this, I promise. Now, we are going to be looking at how the checklist is tracking for every item, whether we've passed or not, so a pass or fail scenario. Um, there's an element of manual comments because we want to say if something has failed, what kind of failure it is and prompt for a second check. And after that, we wanna make sure that any action mentioned has been taken care of. So another yes or no, they are based on the comments added. Remember, we need this easy and flexible. So a very simple ERD format, um, we're gonna focus on three tables and not, that's not the whole solution, this is a specific solution rather than the whole data model. So we have three tables, one is called battle, um, that is uh, reusing the out of the box opportunity table and then two custom tables, one called battle checklist that has a one to many relationships between that and the original battle one and that has our actual checklist columns whilst we're also going to use another table called battle checklist template and that will hold this is where the trick starts this will just be a table where we will hold all the rows with our checklist items and the categories that they belong in we want to automatically generate everything for the user in a beautiful editable subgrid without them having to add line by line how we would usually think of a subgrid so, um, generally, we know that being an Avenger is super hard, a lot of stay. However, um, checklists don't have to be hard. We can think of how low-code power can make them simple, configurable, and extendable. And yes, for those geeks that might love the Avengers as much as I do, this is their training center, so I had the opportunity to visit it last weekend in Norwich in the UK, so you can see the similarity between the movie and the reality of where it was shot. So, um, to summarize, what are we using? We're gonna use three tables in the data model. We're going to use um, an editable subgrid and we're gonna do some magic on the ribbon workbench tool from XRM Toolbox to edit some of the commands. Uh, we're going to, as you saw, have a table that holds the template checklist, a power automate flow, and voila, the music, the magic. So, let's go into the demo and i appreciate it. we've lost a bit of time so i'll be short sweet and formative so can you see my browser now yes we can 
Fantastic. So this is Event 365. It's a full end-to-end -end solution for Tony and the rest of the Avengers to prepare for battle and manage anything that has to do um, with their day-to-day. -day. So this is their homepage. Um, this is a dashboard that each Avenger will have and they can track their open battle programs and how much they're spending on armor or the leads they're getting from the different um, places and sources such as whether it's citizen concerns, field agents from SHIELD, and human referrals and so forth, the top uh, battle opportunities, the territories that they've saved this year and so forth. Um, you can see all the different tables that we're tracking on the left. Um, however, we're excited about battles and this is what we're going to be looking at. Here is our view of the open battle programs that we have forecasted for the rest of the year. The Sokovia battle, is our main concern. Thanos is being quite threatening there and his army is approaching. So there's a battle coming up next week and we're going to help Tony prep for that. So if we go into that record, you'll see how the BPF looks and we have four key stages between qualifying threat, developing the battle plan, starting shield action and eventually stopping the threat. Now we're at the point where we're starting action and to do that we need to prep and thus go into the battle checklist tab and do that. As a reminder, in terms of creating the template and that templated table, it's a very easy thing. You can create your data. Uh, if you want to make it even easier, you can do an Excel upload and then you can think of as many checklist items as you want. It's extendable to the end capacity. But we want to see the automation, right? So. Let's do that. How do we look at that? Battle checklist tab, we have two key elements here. We have a toggle that says prepare for double for battle. Currently it's a no. The minute I say yes and save my record, I will see the population happen rather than going through the traditional route of the subgrid where I have to click on plus new, add each light item, and off we go. So let's do that. Click yes, save. Now in the interest of making this quick. I'm going to do a hard refresh on the record so we're going to see it rather than waiting for the slightly asynchronous action to take place. And then you'll see all the different items that we saw from the templated table now appear in the battle check. Now there we go. The beauty of this is that Tony and the rest of the team can go at any point between checks. So for example, if um, the first check has passed, we can say yes. If the second one is a no, then we say accordingly, add our comments, and when we're ready, we can action. Of course, we can open each line item, no problem. But the idea is that we don't want this to become complicated as we go through this quickly and time is of the essence. The final part, and I apologize for going so quickly, but I don't want to take too much time either, is the flow. So there's three main parts to the flow. The first one is that we're using a trigger for when a row is modified. And this is where we are looking at the main table, um, scope organization in this case, because it's a demo with a global admin role, but by all means approach it with your security model. And we have to filter the row. That's the first important step. We have to make sure that the modifications are for rows where we've just switched the toggle to yes, right? So in this case, because it's a Boolean value, we say it's not equal to false, which is pretty much uh, true and thus yes. The second step is that we're listing all rows. In that case, we are saying take all of the rows from the battle checklist template table, nice and easy. The third one, is an action that we have to pay uh, close attention to. So apply to each, we're taking the values from the template table and we're adding a new row as we go. So for this particular part, we need to map the values between the two tables. To make data hygiene extra happy, um, I have slightly changed the name between the two tables so that it's pretty much the same, but we're not clashing. So area is category, Checklist item is item, so we map those two values. Obviously, we need to say the table name that they're going in because that's the view that we're using for the subgrid. And then um, let's map, obviously, the uh, ultimate table that this is all hosted in in terms of a form, and that's the out-of-the-box opportunity table. Interesting thing that I learned as I was going is that you don't need the publisher for out-of-the-box. <laughs> so that's why your flow might look weird otherwise. 
but otherwise that's how you save it and um, you watch the magic happen. The final bit that I did want to say is that um, because we want the grid there we go. We both, because we don't want the grid to have the traditional commands, I went into Ribbon Warbricks from XRM Toolbox and amended that so I don't see the plus new or other things that I didn't want to see. Um, and that means that people, as in users, are focusing on the prepare for battle toggle then getting distracted by the other commands. So that's the final trick to it. Now, we are completely out of time. So I, I do want to thank everyone. If there are any questions, by all means, and otherwise, feel free to reach out on social media uh, or the blog post. I will be posting everything about the solution as well, so you can see it there. And otherwise, thank you so much for the opportunity. Awesome. Thank you very much. That was very fun. Everyone loved the Avengers theme, as you could probably guess. That was a that was a very big hit with the uh, the audience there. Um, there are there's a couple there's a couple of things over in chat. If you get a chance, you might want to go check those out. Uh, but we are uh, trying to stay on our time here, so we're going to uh, jump over to uh, Abdullah Abdulli Abdulli. Sorry, once again, if I said another name wrong, but uh, if you want to take over and start presenting, we'd love to hear you talk to us about using this stuff in your real life, daily life, real life, yep. whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, so hi, Shane. Um, I don't hey. know, I'm not a speaker right now. I'm not part of the speakers or the presenters right now. So I need to um, sort it, of bump up. Bessa, can you change? I don't have any permissions to change I would have thought I thought everyone could just share but yeah no no no, no. it's only yeah. the challenge is up to like the oh there we go I should be able to do that give me one second and there See, they don't trust me the keys around this joint center. sorry for that <laughs> hey that should work now let's see yeah I, I have that now Oh, look, it's me. Hi, me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's do that. Um, yeah. Okay. So can you see my screen, please? Uh, we see your... Uh, yep. Yeah, there we go. Yes, that is about me. There you go. You should be all set. Well, take it away and show us some awesome stuff, my friend. All right. Thank you, Shane. All right, so uh, my name is Abdullah. <laughs> uh, you, you came close enough, Shane. <laughs> so uh, this is just a little bit about me. So I just put a picture of my YouTube uh, profile there. I just started on YouTube a few months ago. So you can see the tagline is just, you know, join me on my journey in technology. I'm a Microsoft Next Student Ambassador. And what that typically involves is that you always see me sharing and upskilling people on Microsoft technologies. And my focus is on data analytics and power platform. So you can see like the current um, live sessions that are uh, in the screenshots. It's just a power platform challenge that I was that I'm currently running. I was just I'm just running that as we um, mount up towards the power platform global power platform bootcamp that's going to be happening worldwide in various cities near you. So I'm sure you guys all know that you're all community folks and you will all be attending one in your city of choice. So uh, I think that's enough about me. So let's just get into it. All right. So my title for my demo, no, I don't think I'll call this so much a demo as more of a lightning talk <laughs> following the event format. As an, as an event, if you've probably been to um, lots of in-person events, you might have a lightning talk, which is just supposed to charge you up after you've had a lot of technical demos like today. I think this is also nice since it placed me last after the two technical demos today. So you've seen some technical things that you can take away and this session is just to give you a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of overview, a little bit of the bigger picture as you go on to build solutions, both as work and, you know, for fun and to do things in your life as well. All right. So, uh, like I said, this lightning talk is just it's titled Inspiration for Building Solutions from Everyday Life. And it's just going to be a really brief one. We're just going to look at why the power platform why do we have the power platform? What's the, what's the purpose? We should start with why. I think previous pre uh, presenters spoke a little bit about that, starting with why. So yeah, that's really important always to know why we're doing this. 
and to look at your role in the Power Platform and also we'll just look at practical steps to developing that solution mindset. Right, so it's, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so Microsoft mission statement is to empower every person and every organization to achieve more. And for me, the Power Platform is a real, uh, is the epitome of this mission statement, is the latest advancement in this kind of mission statement of Microsoft's to empower everybody to do more. How are they doing that? They are democratizing technology. Ever since Microsoft Office came into play, we've seen that business users and people that are, are not traditionally so close to systems, close to building things, close to doing things, things that have been normally mystified, that you just give it to the tech gurus, give it to some guy in the back room to handle all of that stuff for you. Because of this, Microsoft technologies is now getting more democratized. Is everybody is getting more access to all of these things, and they are able to understand how these things work a bit more. So that's how I look at the Power Platform: is democratizing technology, is democratizing development. It's all about the Power Platform is a local develop, is a local platform, right? So it's just all about bringing the code, bringing developments closer to the people, closer to the business users who the development really is being done for at the end of the day, right? So like I just said on the slide, I just said that Power Platform is to democratize technology and that the Power Platform is the, epi is the epitome, is the latest installment of Microsoft's mission statement, which is to empower everybody and clients to do more through technology. And the Power Platform is helping to put the power of development into the hands of business users. It's taking, it's taking things that would traditionally have been out of, that would have traditionally been just for developers and is empowering people to do more. And uh, this is something that I really resonated with, and it's something a bit of a mission statement for me this 2024, because my uh, background is a bit of data analytics, really. And so I just started focusing much more on the Power Platform this, this year. Mm, last couple of months of last year as well, but really this year I've just been really charged up about the potential which this platform has, and I feel that we're still at the at the foundation, so to say, we still have a long way to go. The adoption is still going to grow much uh, massively. So congratulations to all, of, to all of us on this call. Well, on the ground floor, well, it's only going to get bigger from here. All right, so your role, your role, we've discussed what the Power Platform is all about. So what is your role? To be a solution provider. I guess that's, that's a bit vague. I mean, my uncle asked me once, I was, I was at lunch with my uncle, and he, he asked me that, that what do I want to be? Because like, I'm a law student, I'm, at, I'm an investor right now, and, I'm a law student, but I'm also, you know, into, <laughs> into technology, into IT stuff, as they would like to call it. My office is software engineer, by the way. So he asked me that, you know, what do you want to do? Which path are you going to follow at the end of the day? And I was like, that, you know, I want to be a solution provider. And he just laughed. He was like, what do you mean you want to be a solution provider? Everybody's a solution provider at, at some stage, right? That's the whole idea of, you know, the economy of exchanging, of exchanging goods and services that somebody gives you something, somebody does something for you, the person solving a problem, right? So, but I've always just liked the idea of someone being able to come to me with a problem and me being able to listen to that problem and prefer a solution. So I'm putting it to you that as you build your flows, as you write your power effects, as you build your power pages, as you do all of these amazing things, go through all of these amazing technical sessions, always keep in mind that you're building a solution you should just always have that higher level view. And how I got started with this, I'm, you know, I'm a data analyst and we like to do a bit of storytelling. So I'll just quickly, I've done all, I've showed a bit of my slides. So I'll just go over to an article I did, which just sort of shows this uh, idea of seeing a problem in your daily life and that problem just inspiring you having that solution mindset right so we've looked at what the power platform is we've looked at your role in the power platform which is to be a solution provider and now we're going to look at how you can develop that solution mindset to take inspiration from everyday life to build solutions with the power platform okay so uh hello there just started the school that's uh, my star wars star wars people I'm sure you recognize this so this is just a very simple solution that I built, an events registration app. And what happened was that I was at an event, right? 
and they were giving me a pen and a paper to, you know, they were like, you know, write your details, write your name, your phone number and all of that. And I was like, I mean, <laughs> it was just a bit off to me because I was like, this is 2023. Surely there's a way to do this with technology. There's a better way to do all of this. And so this is just how my uh, thinking approach to development works, right? So what problem is this that we're trying to solve? And then it just struck me as inefficient, like I was, like I was trying to say, being asked to take down contact information on paper, which would, at the end of the day, if somebody is writing your number down on a piece of paper, for the person to actually contact you at the end of the day, he's still going to need to transfer it to a system. I mean, so why, why not just cut out the middleman? Why not just put it into a system directly? And later on, I just got to thinking, and I was like that. I mean, I've been playing around with this power up screen. I, I feel this should be able to do that. And so that's how I did that. So I'll just look at the scenario. I just painted the scenario here. So let's say we want to have an event. Uh, want to have an event. I call this Rice Fest 23. <laughs> just a little bit of fun. Uh, you can call it maybe Pizza Fest 23, Pizza Fest 24. We're in 2024 now. So you, send out, so you send out a form for people to register online. And for so when people register online, so you can have a bit of information, you know, to gather a bit of information so that you can now use to, to anticipate the, the needs of your, you know, your customers, your your participants on the day of your events. So this is the scenario. We have an event. I will send out the form so that people can register online. So what's the problem? So we have an event soon and we want to know how what to plan for. So when they get there, we want to we want to get we want to check people in, we want to give them food tags, and there should also be an opportunity to register fresh at the venue. So we built an app that can be used for events registration so that we can register new users at the venue and also checking people who signed in online. So it's a very simple app, you know, just three screens. The landing screen, the people that have existing registration and the new registration, right? So you know, just have our landing landing screen, just a little bit of fun with this. Uh, so you know, existing registration screen, people come in. Hello, uh, what's your name? My name is uh, Tanya. Just search for your name, Tanya. We'll, we'll find you. Put that in. Or you've not registered at all before. Uh, new registration. <laughs> wow. I guess my. Uh, <laughs> It's been a while since I've done this. I'm looking at the form now, and I, this just shows that you you tend to you, you grow over time. <laughs> the UI the UI of this of this app is is not looking the best. <laughs> but what I was just trying to show with this whole lightning talk, let's say, is just this solution mindset, this solution driven approach that you should always have. You should just always have this idea, and in your daily life as you go about things, just have the uh the mind or the <laughs> have the approach of a developer not just that you're just doing it as work you're just doing you know whatever the client asks you to do but as you go about your daily life as you see problems as you see things let your mind just run free and you you'll be, you'll be surprised at uh solutions that you're able to come up with all right yeah so i think that's just is from me i was just able to go through that really quickly. So uh, thanks for having me, everyone. It's been really great doing this. Thanks, Shane, for your uh, pops and pop with in YouTube videos all, over time. <laughs> yeah, so it's been really great doing this. Well, thank you. I love the session, right? We also really appreciate it, right? We've had Avengers, now we had Star Wars, right? Like, I don't know if you could have planned that better. That was a, a perfect... Uh, <laughs> A perfect way to go but yeah you're, you're awesome right like this whole idea that we we provide solutions right so let's solve some problems let's let's make the world a better place yeah. all right we are a couple minutes over um thank you again to all of our presenters i'm going to steal away and finish this up real quick Boop. and get this thing to go away come on come on all right whatever all right so last little thing here, remember there's lots of different helpful resources out there. So there are all of those lovely links. Or remember the link I gave you at the beginning just to kind of get you all started. It's a great front door to come in, uh, the uh, join the community and start. But please uh, check out the different community, contribute on the forums. It's a great way not only for you to help other people, but it's how you learn. Like if you rewind way back to the beginning of time when I was learning this stuff, one of the ways I learned was I'd go to the forums and just find interesting questions and answer them. So it's it's a great tool for uh, to win-win, so to speak.
Um, so then remember, there are tons of different uh, community calls, right? Some are weekly, some are biweekly, some are monthly. There are so many different calls. Uh, please be joining those, taking advantage of those resources, you know, and make sure you're contributing, right? Sign up to be a speaker, present at these things. There's a lot of opportunities out there. And then finally here, um, there is a uh, official Discord server. So if you are a Discord type of person, um, they have a lovely little chat group in there uh, where they do and talk through things. So join the Discord uh, community. Oh, and now my mouse is not working. There we go. Also, if you've got community call feedback, please fill that out. Um, you know, it helps us shape the future of these. So if you're like, hey, Shane should never present again, then that would be the place to put it. Uh, just keep in mind that, you know, the pointy hair managers at Microsoft do look at these. So, uh, you know, be uh, be truthful, and but be fair, right? Don't uh, don't say Shane's the ugliest person you've ever seen. Say he's one of the ugliest persons you've ever seen, and that'll probably work out. All right. Thank you. Uh, the recording will be posted in 24 hours, so you can go back and check that out, right? It's AKA MS Community Videos. So subscribe. Hopefully, I will see all of you on the next call. It is March 20th, same bat time, same bat channel. Um, once again, you'll probably get to hear me talk way too much, listen to me mess up and make mistakes, and it'll be a good time. So with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Mm -hmm.